Well guys, this is probably going to be my last video for a few weeks as I'll be going away, so I'm glad this one arrived in time. Haolongku needs no introduction by now, with their recent offerings coming hard and fast, with a happy balance of quality sculpt, paint application, and low prices. But throw in the bonus of genera that are little offered, or completely fresh, and it's an exciting time indeed. This time, it's Pentaceratops, one of those ceratopsians like Spiclepius, which are rather well known, but surprisingly haven't had a good model from a major company. Schleich has one, quite nice if you overlook the toes, there's a Peppo with a pose that gives me deja vu in a frozen, yentl kind of way, but it's sculpted to also allow a rearing pose. But between Safari and Collecte, there seems to be no good ones. Enter Haolongku with its latest offering. Out straight away, you see that characteristically very tall frill. Pentaceratops has an estimate of about 6 meters or 20 feet long, so quite a bit smaller than the big boys like Triceratops. This model is about 24 centimeters or 9.4 inches, making the scale about 1 to 25. If you don't agree that Titanoceratops is its own genus but a very large Pentaceratops, then an estimate of about 7 meters or 23 feet puts this at 1 to 30. The tall frill gives it a height of 12.5 cm or 4.9 inches from the ground. Here's how it looks like at 1 to 25. And 1 to 30. Pentaceratops means five horned face, derived from the Greek penda, meaning five, keras, meaning horn, Ops meaning face, though two of them are a bit of a cheat, made of these epijugals which were considered longer than usual. Today we know that many ceratopsians also had very long ones, not just pentaceratops. Now once again, Haolongku offers two colour variants. We have the black and the orange. Let's just pick the black here to look at the detail. With the Ceratopsians, the most obvious thing is the head and frill. And here you can see that long frill that characterizes Pentaceratops. And as a Ceratopsian lover, it's something special to finally behold the impressive length of the frill made real. Now accuracy-wise, given the variability in size, shape, and even number of epoxapitals across members of the same Ceratopsian, there's no one correct answer. But some general comments can be made. First, the epiparietals. You have this very characteristic spread here, but the P1 is really big, even if I imagine a generous helping of keratin. The orientation is also a bit uh, suspect. The P2s are often reconstructed medially directed, as you can see here. Still, there's some variability, for example, AMNH1625. P3s, however, uh, tend to be more rounded in various specimens than this, uh, which is very prominent and pointed. But again, argument can be made for overlying keratin and variability. The parietal embayment, however, is too shallow. Now across various specimens, whether the bottom ended in a round depression or a sharper vertex, the depth was obvious. Indeed, an interesting aspect as we move from Pentaceratops to Anhiceratops is the gradual closure of the parietal embayment, suggesting anagenesis, so it would have been nice to have this captured. The nice thing is this ridge, if I follow it, seems to end around here. If I'm right, then this is correct. Uh, you can see how long the squamosal extends, effectively limiting the area bound by the parietal to the extent that the parietal holds only about three epiparietals. Most of the epoxipitals are episquamosals. The coloration and detail on each of these epoxipitals is pleasing, with tinges of orange to echo the frill. And also these textures. And in the frill, you have very fine scales on the main surfaces.
then getting larger towards the periphery. There is a roughness in these larger ones, but the feeling of crudeness is somewhat ameliorated simply because of all the fineness in the middle here. So you know this roughness is a deliberate choice. But the horns seem to be correctly proportioned and angled. They're very nicely painted and faded. And also nicely textured from the bottom of the root up. Now, the name giving epijugal horns have an orange tinge that echo the frill, and the roots are kind of framed by this patch of dark skin. In fact, this accenting of dark to black here, and on the frill, and around the eyes, just makes it look really badass. The eyes are precisely painted. You can see it's got kind of a, an angry look with the pupils directed forward with a yellow-white iris and blue sclera, all very nicely painted and symmetrically on the other side. And then the rest of the face and yet more of that detail. I especially like this row of skews accentuating the midline. And now the body. Now the body is as you'd expect for a typical ceratopsian. However, it's not quite the body you'd expect for pentaceratops, with its rather short and very compact torso, and rather tall dorsal spines creating a kind of humped appearance. Ligaments probably extended from these spines to help support a large head, so it's a pity that wasn't captured. As we go down the animal, you'll see once again that very nice sculpting in the integument here along the sides. There are peppering of larger scutes, and the detail is of equal quality to Haronku's latest offerings. So is the paintwork as you observe the pattern, and how naturally it fades in its transition to the surrounding skin. And so the body is very eye-catching and there's less obvious focus on the head as is often the case with ceratopsians. Let me know if this kind of balance is something you like. And from above, we see an interesting speculative choice, the addition of rather crocodilian skewts in the midline area. How each is well separated with very well developed keels, so that from the side, it gives the back a crenellated profile. As far as I know, this has never been found in any Ceratopsian, and while aesthetically pleasing to some, it might be an eyesore to others. After a while, you'll probably just get used to and ignore them completely. And surrounding them, just look at these small scales. It's certainly a different aesthetic from PNSO, but pleasing in its own way. In the legs, you see more of that patterning making this a rather flashy animal throughout the body. Again, these creases we've seen elsewhere, giving it a cracked and craggy look we've seen before. At this larger size, perhaps something a bit finer would have been nice. A quick look at the fingers now. And the toes. And then the underside.
And finally, the tail. Um, it would have been nice to see it drooping down like in so many skeletals. Uh, but here you see the banded look I like in tails, then tipped nicely with an accent colour, a motif that seems to be popular with Haolongku as we saw with the Uranosaurus, Dicreosaurus, and Cacarodontosaurus. Now a look at the other variant, the orange. And first, the head and frill. As you can see, the colours are more fiery here, with the bright yellows and oranges. The frill detail is easier to see on the yellow. Beautiful how you get these blends and a, even a little infusion of green. Again, the horny bits are tinted to reflect the main colours here, this time in yellow or orange. down the face, and moving down the body, a bright hodgepodge of yellow and brown tones. In the orange variant, the balance between head and body is even more pronounced because you have so much of the yellow here in the body. And this homogeneity of colour tones may detract from the frill. Now this kind of colour mix actually reminds me of a Beasts of the Mesozoic palette. I can't remember which specific model now. Then we have the limbs. And here I like how the hands and feet have this darker blue-grey contrast. Then the tail, once again tipped with an accent colour. And finally, a direct comparison. About the pose, um, I like the slight tilt in the head seen from the front, making it less static. The attitude of the hands and feet are interesting, being on all the digits. This is a little unusual looking, perhaps while shifting position or in the process of having movement arrested. Or with the two of them unlocked together, it also makes sense. We have two adult males testing each other, starting to push off in earnest. Now this is the kind of interactivity I like, as seen in the Eophornus triceratops. So, some comparisons. First, we have their recent Nasutoceratops. The difference in size is obvious, now this being about 1 to 27 scale, so not a very good comparison with 1 to 25. 
but I think you can see the common aesthetic shared by both, especially perhaps this stripe. Then we have the PNSO Taurosaurus, which actually is quite a bruiser, and you see the difference that scale makes, with this pentaceratops being very close in dimensions. the PNSO Triceratops, I don't have a Vista he ever saw, but I do have my customary size comparator the Wilson T-Rex. So that's it for my review of the Haolongu Pentaceratops, except for the proportions of the body and some minor frill characteristics aside, I'm delighted to have a representation of this long neglected Ceratopsian. In fact, it's the only one I have. The skill and quality of the paint application is still as good as the last three releases, and I hope it will stay as Haolongu's baseline standard at the same affordable prices. It blows the current standard of paint apps from Collecte and Wild Safari out the water, which is a pity because those two often have very good sculpts, just let down by the paint. Well my friends, that will be it from me for a while. I'm taking a break for a couple of weeks, which means I'll probably miss out the next PNSO offering. And so selfishly speaking, I hope it'll be something I have zero interest in, maybe Bilzy Bufo. If not, I guess I'll just be watching the reviews with the rest of you, something I haven't had the time to enjoy for a long time. So have a good couple of weeks ahead, be nice to each other in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.